Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at Elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. This is KY4BDP. I'm Brian. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, this is another antenna in the antenna series. And today, I'm building the AV, high gain AV640 antenna here in my driveway. Should be a fun project. I don't expect to put all this together in one day because, number one, I'm not that handy. And number two, I may have to take it back apart to reorient things. But uh, I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Not for the entire thing, but as I get this thing completed in stages, and I uh, just want to kind of give you an idea of the uh, environment that I'm working in here. I've got birds up in the trees and so forth. So give me one second and I'll reorient this camera and we'll look around the uh, driveway and what I've got set up. Alrighty, so now I've got the camera pointing uh, away from the garage here. You'll notice I've got the uh, saw horses out that I picked up at Lowe's. And I've got a... Uh, uh, a little awning cover here so I can stay out of the sun as much as possible. If you zoom in, you can actually see that I've got a little bit of gear already set up. In fact, I'll go ahead and just walk out here. But I've got a little bit of gear set up. I've got my laptop and I've got uh, my power supply, my uh, IC7300 I just purchased not too long ago. Still learning that and that'll be on the channel at some point in the future. Some various uh, sundries. Even put uh, some power poles on. My first attempt at that. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever do a video on that but uh, definitely uh, my first time. And then as we pan around here I've got the antenna down here at the bottom. It's still in the box. I showed a picture of this on Instagram not too long ago, so that's where that is. It's been in my garage because I've been on the road so much. And then I've got a table set up over here with some tools. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go get more tools, but this was on the uh, parts list, if you will, or the tools list for getting started. So that's kind of my setup, and I'll be working here in the, my driveway with these sawhorses to lay out the antenna as we go by and I've also got the Biggers antenna set up uh, just helped a guy with a POTA activation not too long ago uh, since I've got my 7300 set up and I've got my FT-2DR uh, handheld uh, listening to the two meters local channel for our club so in any event that's what uh, I'm gonna do to get started so let me go ahead and uh, get started a little bit and then I'll bring you back and I'll kinda bring this back to you in starts and fits so now I've got everything out of the box and I've put everything on the table. Now even with this nice layout, <laughs> all the parts, uh, I, I just know me, I, I know I'm going to have some problems. But hey, that's part of the fun, right? Uh, fun's relative term. Uh, in any event, you can see I've got everything laid out here. I've got the balun and I've got all these poles. I've got the mounting bracket. I've got a piece of PVC with certain length holes drilled in it. Bags, and I mean bags of hardware. That's intimidating to me all by itself. And then I've got the coils for the other uh, frequencies still wrapped in bubble wrap on this one pole right here. So I just wanted to show you the pieces parts before I really get started here, uh, laid out here on the table. And then hopefully this afternoon I'll uh, have a number of these put together. So stand by and wait for the next uh, sequence as I get a few of these bits put together. All right, so now we have sections put together with hose clamps to make sure that each of these tubular sections, this is the top part, which is your longer frequencies uh, with the coils, all these hose, hose clamps as we go down through here is to ensure that each of the sections stays together, stays where it should be, they will not insert any further. They actually have dimples uh, tapped into each of the pipes to make sure that you don't insert them too far. And then there's an insulator down on this end. We'll use those two collars there to uh, anchor radials on the bottom end. And then that's the end. And as we look at it from this end and up, quite a long ways out to there. I actually measured it. It's 30 feet, 30, 31 feet, somewhere in that ballpark pretty darn long. So first stage is done. Let's move on to the next stage and I'll bring you back. It's taken me a little while, given uh, not the best with tools at times and reading directions, but I think I finally have it. These standoffs for the 6, 12, and 17 or something along those lines uh, had to be metal down on this far end. So here's the base end 
And then this is the first standoff, second standoff. Notice the aluminum is used here. And they have to be 90 degrees out. So you have to kind of eyeball it and then get down on your knees and eyeball it some more. Now, as you get past these aluminum ones, you'll see the black ones. The black ones have to line up with the aluminum ones. And so as you go down, you'll see we've got another one there. And obviously these are at certain lengths that I had to measure like three times. And as you keep going down, you finally get to the last couple. And of course I had to measure these three or four times to make sure and then remeasure it again before I tighten them down. So that is stage two on the antenna. So stage two is done, got the standoffs, and I'll be back with stage three. We're back with uh, the end of the last stage, or second to last. Balin is now installed. We have that collar as well for some radials a little bit later once we have it actually on the mounting mast. And then you'll remember the standoffs. Well, now we actually have the rods, aluminum rods that will help us with the uh, six, 10, 12, and 17 meter bands. So you'll notice the standoffs now have those rods inserted. Uh, and as we go down, we'll get to each of those, end of each of those rods. 17 is the last one. And then we're gonna reach the 20, 30, and 40 meter coils. Now, each of these has spokes. And when you actually do the to uh, tuning of these, uh, you only have to tune one of the spokes according to the directions. So we'll have two spokes, four, four, and four all right and then as far as the rest of the 40 meter pole here it goes out a certain length on this end according to a chart uh, that uh, they gave me in the directions so now if we look at it from this end and look at it all the way down you can kind of get a feel for the length of that antenna so once I'm ready to put it up on the mast here, probably tomorrow, like I said, I didn't think I would get done with it today. I will uh, get this up on the mast. We'll start tuning it a little bit, maybe adjusting some of the links on the spokes and so forth and see if we can get it in resonance on the bands that I like to reach anyway. So I'll be back once we have it up on the mast. Well, the final stage is complete. The antenna is now on its mast. I'm staying behind this tree to keep the sun hopefully out of the camera as much as possible. But you can see, dug a hole, put in the wooden post, utilize an aluminum mast, all of that from my favorite uh, home improvement store here in my local town, and added the radials to the antenna. So now you can see the radials. Now the antenna in its vertical orientation you can really start to see how tall this is. Now, some of you are going to say, goodness, Brian, you've got this really close to some trees. This is the highest uh, part of my property, my compound here. And uh, there were two thoughts to this. Number one, I kept the antenna fairly far away from each of the trees in this orientation so that it's pretty straight up. Uh, the second is, is that we have a very strong base uh, so that it's not going to move a whole lot. We don't get a whole lot of wind here in Kentucky, but at the same time, there will be some. So I wanted to make sure it was uh, as far away as I could and that it would be taller than some of the trees around it. The other reason for this particular location is that it's stealthy. I didn't want my neighbors to see this just poking out of the sky. So uh, most of this antenna is not visible by any of my neighbors. So that's the orientation. Now some of you eagle-eyed folks will see that. I've already got a cable connected. My cable did come in. I've got that connected there. And we're going to be hooking that up to the antenna analyzer and going some through some of the bands here in just a moment so you guys can get a feel for what that looks like out of the box. So I'm going to stop the recording here. We'll get the antenna analyzer hooked up to it and then we'll begin again and see where we stand on some of the bands. Yeah. 